All right, guys, this is part two of the first uh, video install of the chain and sprocket. Uh, if you haven't watched that or if you want to watch it, I'm going to leave a, a link on the description. But let's go on with the review and let me tell you what I think about the new sprocket. As we said in the first video, this is a super light um, 47 teeth. That's uh, four teeth up from the stock. Um, wow, what can I say? I mean, it's amazing. It's amazing, guys. I have no words to describe how amazing and how much it transformed the bike. Um, it's really difficult to explain the words. So I'm just gonna go ahead and jump in the video so you can see um, the difference in top speed and how quicker it can actually get to that speed. So let's start with our video and get back to the review. Okay, so as you saw, I actually gained in top speed. Before, with the stock sprocket, I, uh, once I was in sixth gear, it was pretty much dead. I mean, it was pointless to be in sixth gear unless you wanted to cruise. Um, it offered nothing more, it couldn't accelerate anymore. Um, usually, if anything, when I switched to sixth gear, it would drop speed until it accelerates into a higher speed after that. Um, so for instance, when I was around 227 kilometers per hour on fifth gear, and I uh, shifted in the sixth gear, it actually dropped to 226, because sixth gear didn't have enough um, power to, to bring that speed up. So it took a long, long road to even go up to 229. So technically 229 was the top speed I could get out of the stock sprocket. Now with the 47 teeth, um, I mean, I actually redlined uh, six gear completely at uh, top speed 233. Um, so I, technically I gained the top speeds. Uh, there's no question about that. Also, I'm actually able to reach that speed a lot faster. Now the video that you just saw, it's not actually in real time, meaning that um, the, the timing between the left and the right video are not actually the same. So if you actually see the speed reaching faster in one of those videos, it's not actual, it's not actually reaching that speed at that real time because I actually had it cut and edit um, some of the gears. Uh, for instance, after fourth gear, going to fifth gear, I had to uh, slow down the bike uh, and reach that top speed later on. So I had to cut and edit it. So it's not real time, um, but if I, if I actually had a, um, a video comparison of acceleration first through sixth gear, you would actually see how faster it accelerates. Uh, you actually feel it too. I, I had to turn off uh, wheel control because um, at some point, you probably can see it in the video too, uh, on the right uh, video, it, wheel control will kick in all the time because now it accelerates so fast, it actually, it struggles to keep the wheel down. Uh, it's I love it. I have no complaints about it. Uh, I'm so glad I went with this sprocket, uh, the 47 teeth. Um, uh, what can I say? I think it's a must. It's probably the cheapest mod that you can do to this bike to uh, increase performance. Literally the cheapest mod that you can do. I would say it can even 
outperform an exhaust or a tune. Uh, I mean, of course, there are all the reasons why you need to do an exhaust and a tune, but if you want something quick, something to transform this bike, a sprocket, it is what it is. Now, downsides. There's only one downside, and that downside is if you commute. If you commute on freeway speeds, and those speeds are above 60 miles an hour, I would say around 70 or 80, uh, once you start exceeding 70 or 80 miles an hour, it, it, six gear runs a little high. Um, I'm rarely on freeways, uh, so I don't really care. Um, I mostly ride on the canyons, so I noticed when I was returning back from the ride on the freeway, uh, I was returning around 80 or 90 miles an hour, and it was it was a little bit exhausting. Like if I had to do that for 20 miles distance, it wouldn't be fun. More vibration from the engine because now the revs are higher. Um, so again, if you're if you're a commuter and you want this bike to commute daily, I'm not sure. I'm not sure if this would be a good idea for you. Um, but if you stick within 60 or 70 miles an hour, then it's fine. It's completely okay. Anything 70 miles and above, it becomes um, uh, difficult. Now, another very huge plus that I noticed with the new Sprocket, the quick shifter. Oh my god, it's so much smoother uh, at low RPM. I'm talking about 2000 RPM uh, shifting at 2000 RPM, although I never really shift at 2000 RPM, but I noticed it can actually do it. Um, I'm not sure because they have more torque because the, the Sprocket is uh, larger. But, oh my god, the, the quick shifter is so much better. I, I love it. I literally transformed the bike and I honestly believe this is a must upgrade. Um, now, I did mention in the first video that I will talk about um, why I chose to go with only rear and not front sprockets. Why did I go with the first 7 rear and I left the front at 17, 17 and I did not change that. Um, well, that's wear rate. That's the reason I actually only changed to 47. So um, I I will bring something on screen here from the website I used to calculate the wear rate. And I'm gonna go over a little bit uh, what the wear rate is and how you can calculate it to make the right choice for you. So let's take a look at that. Okay, so this is the website I use, uh, blocklayer.com. I use this mainly uh, to calculate um, sprocket wear rate, chain, chain wear rate, and uh, sprocket center distance. Okay, so um, to show you how to do this, this box over here is uh, where you need to input all the information, starting with the link paint pitch. Uh, it's uh, for the R660, uh, the 520 chain, it's actually uh, 0625. Um, if you need to find your uh, pitch, you can just Google it. Uh, 520 chain is uh, 0.625. Um, small teeth, that's for this front sprocket. Stock, we are at 17. Large teeth, that's the rear sprocket. We are at 43 teeth and our chain links for our stock. Uh, RS660 chain is 110 and all you do is hit calculate and it gives you first uh, it gives you the sprocket centers uh, that's 632 that's in millimeters of course you can change into inches I prefer uh, sticking to metric um, sprocket centers is 632 millimeters and by inputting this information you can see here that the wear rate for both is at 100%. Now, what does that mean? It's very simple, it actually tells you here. It says for every 17 chain revolutions, the same tooth on the small sprocket contacts the same chain link. It's as simple as that. Um, now, when you try to input a different uh, number of teeth, for, let's say for the rear sprocket, uh, if we do a 45 and we recalculate it at 110 chain links, you will notice two things. One, the wear rate drops on the rear. Now every nine chain revolution is the same tooth on the large, which is the rear sprocket, it contacts the same chain link. Um, that's not a good wear rate. But also, the sprocket center distance dropped significantly. It went to 623. And before we were at um, 632. 
Okay, that's a big difference in sprocket distance. Uh, why do you care about the sprocket distance? You do because that also affects the wheelbase. Uh, you need to keep the wheelbase as close as possible to what the stock is. Of course, you have some wiggle room to, to increase or decrease, uh, but for the most part, it's best if you stick to the same um, because this will affect how the bike handles. Um, now, if you want to go with a rear 45 uh, sprocket, and you notice that this drops too much and the wear rate is not optimal, in this case, what you need to do is actually increase uh, the chain links. In our case, we'll just go with uh, two extra links at 112, recalculate it. And we see here now that the optimal wear rate is at 100% for both, which is perfect. And we only increase uh, a few millimeters on the sparky centers. Now this is a distance that you can work with. It's not that large. So this way you can tell that Okay, so this combination would be a combination that you can actually go because not only you're keeping an optimal wear rate, but also the distance is is a number that you can get away with. Now, I actually went with 47 rear, kept the front on 17 and increased the chain links at 112. Now, if we calculate that, you will see that we're all still at 100% optimal wear rate and now we're at 630 distance. 630 distance is a minimum change of what the stock was. The stock, if we return to the stock, which was 43 and 110 chain links, you will see that 630 was 632. So that's just two millimeters change, which is negligible. I mean, two millimeters could all probably come by just adjusting the chain uh, tension. So that was my goal. That's why I chose uh, 47 rear. And at 45, I wanted to stick to the same distance as much as possible. Um, how to increase the chain, which I already wanted to do anyway because I wanted to change it to a gold chain. Uh, calculate it, and this is where I am. Now, cal um, wear rate, doesn't. how much does it matter? If you're a street rider, it does, because you want to have an optimal wear rate in order for you to not have to change pockets and chains and chain all the time. Now, if you track, honestly, this doesn't matter because if the track you're about to race calls for a 16 front and a 45 um, rear, let's calculate it. And okay, we have a really bad wear rate in the front, um, but that wouldn't matter. All that would matter is if that's the combination you need to, to have the best, best results in the track, then that's what you're going to go with. Uh, wear rate wouldn't really matter on a track um, or just decreasing the chain links to 110 so yeah you would get better rate overall but still not optimal um, front sprocket and wear rate is probably the biggest reason i did not change the front sprocket also by changing this front sprocket since the the distance see here it actually tells you the the diameter uh, of both sprockets. So if the diameter of the front sprocket changes, that means that there will be more contact on the um, chain guide, uh, which I wanted to avoid for uh, less wear at the chain guide too. So overall, since I mostly ride on the streets, um, I'll aim for optimal uh, wear rates and uh, 17 front at 112 and this is 104. I stick to the same wheelbase, optimal wear rate. So uh, this is what I use to calculate it, guys. Uh, try using this website. Uh, it's actually very helpful. Um, it has additional information if you want to, which I'm not gonna go over right now because I'm trying to make this video as short as possible. Um, you have a menu here that you can actually check tire size comparison, uh, transmissions, anything you need here. Um, so yeah, this is a very helpful website. This is another website that I use, Gear in Commander. Uh, I like this because you can actually load your bike through this. In our case, it's Aprilia. Uh, our model is RS 660, load bike gearing, and it gives you all the stock uh, numbers, current or custom that you have the option to change. Uh, and it gives you the top speed for each uh, RPM, whatever you select. Uh, in our case, if you want to find the top speed, which I believe uh, it's at 11,300 11, RPM. Maybe wrong, but I think that's the red line for the R660. So 11,300, 
at a stock gearing 1743 at 110 links would technically on paper give us 247 kilometers per hour uh, top speed that's not the case you're never going to get 247 this is why um, it's a good idea to change the gearing because the stock gearing uh, for the R660 e is for this speed. So by changing uh, the gearing, let's say here, we're gonna do a custom one at 11300 and we're going to change the rear sprockets to 47 and increase our chain links to 112. And then if you click here a custom, you will see here that the top speed drops to 226. Now, again, why is this not realistic? Because I was actually able to do 233, and that was with a lot of wind resistance, uh, which is telling me I can actually go above 233, maybe 235-ish, uh, probably. Um, but since I was able to do 233, and this is telling me 226, is telling me it's not exactly accurate, but it's a good starting point, point and a good reference to um, calculate the results or to know what to expect with the uh, sprockets that you're going to change. Both these websites are very helpful. Um, definitely recommend them to use them before you uh, decide what you want to go for. Thanks for watching. I hope this video helped you decide whether you want to change the sprocket or not. If you have any questions, leave a comment and also like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next one.